In this video, we will start by working on an exercise that involves a decay series. You know when decays are one after the other, like dominoes. Then, we will look more in depth to one of the alpha decays of the series. And we will determine the speed at which the alpha particle is ejected from the mother nucleus. So this will involve calculations for energy released by the decay, as well as using the concept of conservation of momentum. An exam exercise appears on the screen. Pause the video and work on the questions. Then resume the video to view a detailed collection and benefit from mini-lessons. Yes, each question is a chance to review a concept. When you are ready, resume the video and together we will go through the exercise while at the same time reviewing the main concepts you need to know for your exam. This exam preparation video is suited for students preparing their final high school exams in physics, like the IB standard level or high level, A levels, or any other high school physics program that include nuclear physics. Did you manage to answer all the questions? Let's review them together, one by one. Thorium-232 decays into radium by alpha decay. The isotope of radium which is formed decays into actinium by beta minus decay. Then the actinium nucleus becomes thorium again after another beta minus decay. Question 1. Write down the three successive decay reactions. Three marks. Two reactions, three marks. Yeah, one reaction per mark. So, thorium, 232, 90. Do you know what these numbers are? Well, you know that a nucleus is made of neutrons and protons. 90 here is a number of protons. 232 is a number of neutrons plus protons. Neutrons and protons are called nucleons. So this is also called the number of nucleons. Now, there's an alpha decay that occurs. And it transforms the thorium into radium. Plus an alpha. What is an alpha? An alpha is a helium nucleus. A helium nucleus contains two protons and two neutrons. Therefore, two protons and four nucleons. These decay reactions need to conserve charge and number of nucleons. So you see that the charge here, we've got 90 uh, charges uh, on the thorium because we have 90 protons in the nucleus. The radium can only have 88. Yeah, the nucleus lost two via the alpha decay. And here, the number of nucleons need to be conserved through the reaction. So to get 232 from 4, you need 228. So this is radium-228, which is the isotope formed by alpha decay of thorium-232. Radium-228 will decay via beta minus into actinium. So we got our radium-228 becomes actinium plus. Okay, so it's a beta minus. What does a beta minus decay do? A beta minus transforms a neutron into a proton plus an electron and an antineutrino. So if I put the numbers, I get here one, zero, one, one, zero, minus one, zero, zero. You see it's conserved. One equals one plus zero, zero. Zero equals one minus one. So how does it translate here? Well, we have our electron here and our antineutrino. Here, a neutron will be transformed into a proton. So it means that the number of protons increased. And you see it by conservation of the charge, we need to have 89 here. On the other hand, a neutron transformed into a proton, so the number of nucleons remain the same. Right, and sum of neutrons plus protons is still the same. So we have 228. But we could have guessed that because 228 plus 0 equals 228. 
Now for the third reaction, the actinium will transform into a thorium by beta minus decay, so it's the same story. Well, the number of nucleons remained unchanged, and a neutron transformed into a proton, so you get 90. Yeah, of course you get 90, because this number determines the element. So we'd better get 90 back <laughs> if it's thorium. Question two. The mass of a thorium-232 nucleus is 232 point blah blah. The radium isotope formed after the decay has a mass of 228 point blah blah. An alpha particle has a mass of 4 point blah blah. Yeah, I'm using blah blah because I'm too lazy to say decimals. There are many of them, but they're important. So you can find them in the text. What's also important is that the unit of mass used is the unified atomic mass unit, one U which is 1.66 by 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Actually, some decimals behind it. And, yeah, this corresponds to 1 12th of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. It's a definition. It's a very practical unit in nuclear physics, a unit for mass. Right, so what do they want? Yeah, how much energy is released in the decay from thorium to radium? Well, well, why does it release energy? Well, because every natural reaction will release energies to stabilize the system. The thorium nucleus is trying to stabilize. So it decays into radium and alpha and energy. How do we find it? Where does this energy come from? Well, it comes from the conversion of some of the mass of the nucleus into energy. Yeah, mass and energy are two sides of the same coin. They are equivalent, according to Einstein, right? E equals mc squared. So here, it's a mass difference. So it's going to be delta E equals delta mc squared. So the first step would be to find the mass difference, which we call also the mass deficit. MR is a mass of reactants. MP is a mass of products. So the mass deficit would be the mass of reactants minus the mass of products. In that case here, it would be a positive value because the mass of thorium is larger than the mass of radium plus alpha. What has the mass that is disappeared become? Energy. So let's calculate the mass first. Well, we plug in the, the numbers. Now be very careful when you plug in the numbers in your calculator, it's easy to make mistakes because there are many decimals. I actually recommend that you write it down on your paper. Just in case you make a mistake in the calculator, the examiner will at least see that you know what you're doing. And I found uh, 0.00433 you. Now, what is the relation between mass and energy? It's equal to mc squared. And if we apply 1u as mass, we can find an equivalence between 1u and 931.5 mev. 1u is actually equivalent to 931.5 mev. So it's easy to find the energy released which corresponds to the mass that appeared to have disappeared. It's going to be zero... Oh, my board is falling. It's going to be 0 0.00433 by 931.5, which gave me 4.03 mevs. So each time a thorium-232 decays into a radium-228, it releases 4.03 mega electron volts. That's the answer to the question. Now, you might wonder, how did I come with this number? I recommend that you remember this number. It's very practical for this type of exercise. The board is definitely wanting to fall. So let's figure it out. Let's use E equals mc squared. 
in N, I'm going to put, well, one U, right? So I need to put it in kilograms because I need to be in SI units. So it's going to be 1.66 by 10 to the minus 27, multiplied by 3 by 10 to the 8, which is the speed of light, squared. That will give me the energy, but in joules. I want it in electron volts. So I need to divide this by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 13, which is equivalent in joules to one mega electron volt. Like this, I know how many mega electron volts I have in this number in joules. And I will find something around 934 mega electron volts. So that would be mega electron volts now. So this is not 931.5. Yeah, because I've rounded these numbers. These numbers have got many decimals associated with them. So, uh, for example, even the electric charge is not 1.6. It's 1.60 something with a two in it. I don't know them. But if you do not round the numbers, you end up with this value for a mass of one U. Let's see question B. State what the energy released has become. Okay, yeah, because this alpha decay will release energy, but what does the energy become? What does it do? It releases energy. Well, this energy becomes the kinetic energy of the products. Is, not, it doesn't, it's not even become. It actually is the kinetic energy of the products. You can imagine quite easily, say, take for example, here this is my thorium uh, nucleus, not moving, it's at rest, and suddenly it splits in two, into the hadron and the alpha. Poof. Well, now the products, hadron and alpha, have got kinetic energy due to the decay. And the kinetic energy they have is the energy released by the decay. Question 2C. A thorium nucleus was at rest before decay. Determine the speed of the alpha particle after reaction. Four marks. Yeah, four marks because there's a few steps to go through. We want the speed of the alpha particle. Hmm. So, in other words, we want its kinetic energy. But we know that the energy released by the reaction goes to the kinetic energy of the products. So we know that the kinetic energy of the alpha plus the kinetic energy of the radon is equal to 4.03 mEV. We have one equation, two unknowns. So we need to find another equation. <coughs> and to do that, we going to use conservation of momentum. Yeah, you have your thorium nucleus in its initial state. It's at rest, according to the text. So the initial momentum is zero. Then after the decay, you have the radon and the alpha, and they split. And the thorium split into these two, poof, like this. So the radon and the alpha have got momentum. The final momentum will be the momentum of the radon plus the momentum of the alpha. By conservation of momentum, you end up with this, radon plus alpha equals zero. So, P radon equals minus P alpha. So that's pretty interesting information. Why? Because we know that the kinetic energy can be expressed with momentum. You know that the kinetic energy is one half mv squared, or mvv. This is momentum, P. So it's also one half PV. But momentum is mv, so v is p over m, so this gives you one half p multiplied by p over m, or in other words, p squared over 2m. Now, the kinetic energy equals to p squared over 2m is a formula which is used quite often in nuclear physics. I recommend you know it. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll try to find the ratio of the kinetic energies. So I write Ke alpha on Ke radon, for example. That's going to be equal to P squared alpha over 2m alpha 
divide them by p squared radon over 2m radon. Now I can see that because the momentums are the same in magnitude, I can cancel them. Hey, as well as the twos here. So that gives me that the ratio of the kinetic energy of alpha and radon is equal to the ratio of the masses of radon and alpha. You just flip the masses. Radon is 228 in mass. I'm just going to use the, the main numbers 228 and 4. That's 57. So basically, the alpha particle is taking most of all the energy. Yes, it's the lightest. Now, I have two equations. I have this one. And I have this one. I can solve. For example, well, I'm interested in the kinetic energy of the alpha. So I'm going to replace the kinetic energy of the radon by 1 57th of the kinetic energy of the alpha. So if I put these two together, I end up with kinetic energy of the alpha, 1 plus 1 on 57 equals 4.03 mevs. Yeah, so I can find out the kinetic energy of the alpha is equal to 57 on 58 by 4.03, and I'm going to put this in joules, 1.6 by 10 to the minus 13 joules, and I end up with a number which is 6.34, by 10 to the minus 13 joules. Yeah? Well, now it's pretty simple because I've got the kinetic energy. I know the mass of the alpha, so I don't have much space on the board. I've got this is equal to 1 half m v alpha squared. So I just rearrange v alpha equals square root of 2 ke over m. This is the Ke of the alpha. M is going to be 4.00266 something multiplied by the mass in kilograms, 1.66 by 10 to the minus 27, which gives me in the end 1.4 million meters per second. Voila, that's it for today. I hope this video has helped you prepare for your final exam in physics. We reviewed the concept of decay series and how to calculate the energy released in a decay reaction. We also used conservation of momentum to determine the speed at which an alpha particle was ejected during an alpha decay. There are many other videos like these on the channel, so do hit that subscribe button and ace at your exams in physics. In the meantime, see you soon on the channel where physics is made easy.